here we go. So uh, it's the third quality control step. So we did the quality control of the raw reads, and then we did the quality control for the alignment level, and now we do it for the whole experiment level. Um, so the idea here is to get an overview of the uh, similarities and dissimilarities between our samples. So we want to know if our experimental groups, let's say we have cancer samples and uh, normal samples or, or untreated samples and treated samples, and we want to know if they actually separate from each other. Um, so was our experiment successful in, in that sense? And we also want to find out if there's a confounding factor, uh, some sort of patch effect, for example, that should be taken into account when doing the statistical analysis. So, for example, if you um, prepared your samples on Monday and then the other ones on Friday, there might be some, uh, some difference between those two patches. So that's something you want to check at this point. Also, there could be some outliers. So if you, I don't know, uh, get some contamination to one of your samples or something like that, or, or you just uh, mix the tubes or something, uh, this is the point where you're able to uh, check that as well. Uh, there are again several methods that you can use um, for experiment level quality control. Uh, they are mostly based on these uh, dimension reduction um, methods. So uh, we are looking at the MDS plots and PCA plots, so multidimensional scaling plots and principal component analysis plots, and then some basic clustering. Um, so this is the MDS plot, um, and this, this is from H HR tool. So uh, the distances in this plot correspond to the log fold chains or biological co coefficient of variation between each pair of samples. And it's calculated using 500 most heterogeneous genes. Uh, that, so those ones that have largest dispersion when treating all samples as one group. And the idea here is just to see um, if they are separated um, as, as groups. So for example, here the red ones are the treated ones, and the black ones uh, are the untreated ones. So you can see that, yes, they are separated uh, nicely, but there's also something else else happening because they are also separated in, in this direction. Um, then there's the principal component analysis plot. It's it's a bit similar to the MDS plot, um, um, but but the mathematics behind are, are different, so it's showing a bit different things. Um, with the PCA, uh, well, we use DSIG to uh, tools under under this this uh, chipster tool, so we always plot the two uh, first two principal components, which are calculated after the variance stabilization stabilizing transformation. So uh, here on x x axis you can see the principal component one, and on y principal component two, and uh, they indicate the proportion of variance explained by 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 each component. So you can see here, hopefully, that the principal component 1 ex is explained in 76% uh, of variance between these, these samples, and principal component 2 is explaining 11%. Um, so here you can again see nicely that um, um, group 2 is, is very much in, in one clump here, and then group 1 is, is a bit uh, scattered, but it's still very much separatable from, from group two. So principal component one is clearly the, the explaining factor for the difference between the groups, but again, there might be something in, in, in principal component two axis as well. It also says here that uh, uh, if principal component two explains only a very small percentage of variance, it can be ignored. So now it's 11%. If it's, say, 2% or something, then it's probably not that that important information. Um, the third option that we are checking today is the heat map that is also um, from DC2. And it's, well, there are many options, but it's just showing the Euclidean distance between the samples, and they, that also is calculated after the variance stabilizing transformation. So here as well, you should be able to see that. Um, well, in this example, for example, this age group, 
um, it's it's grouping uh, nicely compared to this GM M group. So these are the things that you want to want to check. So again, uh, if I go back here, uh, now if I would have uh, um, so so uh, well maybe in this case uh, I was talking about the batch effect. So now uh, I I could maybe assume that there could be some batch batch effect between these samples and these samples because they are separated so clearly uh, on the y-axis. Uh, if there would be an outlier, um, well, it's it's a bit different, difficult to say from here. But maybe, for example, here if we would have uh, uh, four blue blue dots and three of them would be here in one clump and one would be somewhere further away, you could maybe top that that's an outlier. So those kind of things you you can detect.